Welcome to HCC 50 Years and Counting. I'm Todd Duplantis. Houston Community College celebrates our 50th anniversary in 2021, and we are looking back at the history of Houston Community College through the eyes of many who have been here for quite some time. And joining me right now is Gwen Drumgool, and you're the risk manager here at HCC. Thanks for being here with me. Thank you. You've been on board since 1980. That's, that's quite a while. And uh, yes. you started uh, at your career, you now work in risk management, but you started as a secretary in the budget office. Yes. And that's, let's talk about, that was a big transition from being a secretary in a budget office, really, to working into risk management where you are now. Well, that's true. Uh, when I first uh, started my career here at HCC, uh, I had been a secretary at Texas Southern and had worked in industry. And when I started as a secretary, I enjoyed the numbers. And so hard work and concentration, mm -hmm. I was able to move uh, from a secretary into a technical position in the budget office. And there was a lot of um, mobility during that time in when, the early 80s. When you, okay, you run back to the early 80s when you first started. Um, what were the schedules like? Were, was most of the classes at night at that time? And where was your first office? Well, my first office was at 22 Wall Drive. And I was there for 20 years Wow! at that location. And um, the, we were housed in at 22 Wall Drive as well. So you guys weren't at a campus, you were more no, the administrative we, office? No, that was the administrative office okay. that we had. And we were there, I was there from 1980 until 2000 when we re relocated into 3100 Main. When you were at the, the office off of Wall Drive, was this um, back when we were working under the HISD board at that time? Uh, maybe you can tell me about that and how that worked. Oh, most definite. Uh, when we were at 3100 Main, we had the same governing board, uh, and we were kind of like the stepchildren because HISD was their primary objective. However, uh, we were under the auspices of that same board. So for our board meetings and everything, we were very close with the board of trustees because the budget is a fiscal um, guide right. for which an organization uh, actually operates. And so naturally, we got a lot of um, direct contact with the board because whatever numbers we had they had to be correct right. and so with the administration the board was the, one of the main focuses and this was hisd's board of trustees that that governed hisd had those meetings did they hold separate meetings for houston community college or are we at the tail end of the regular meetings oh no we had our special meetings and there are certain guidelines that uh the HISD has to follow, and there are certain guidelines that we had to follow, and the notices and everything, the way in which we do it now, all of the postings mm -hmm. had to be up. So there were separate meetings for HCC. And because of nowadays, when we when we have um, uh, meetings, everything's posted online on the website, and you have. Uh, sheets of paper that are posted by law in in the building itself it is. back then that was really the only way to get the word out unless you bought into the newspaper and I guess you would do ads in there as well well they did ads in the newspaper but everything had to be sent to Austin mm -hmm. because of the guidelines that we had so it had to go through Austin first then well, back here or be approved yeah, through Austin uh, be approved and then it was posted and they did the posting uh, there we were actually uh, two stores, and so everything was posted outside downstairs on the first floor uh, for before our meetings took place. Now, of course, this was before email. Was there a lot of running back and forth between HISD's uh, administrative offices and the WA Drive or 3100? There were, 
And uh, there were meetings that were held at HISD, and there were meetings that were also held at HCC. But the majority of the meetings were held uh, at the HISD office. And uh, most of the time, well, you have to understand that most of the administrators that uh, were d dealing with the day-to-day -day operation came from HISD. Right. And so therefore, those ties were very, very close. And the technical programs were really a lot of the focus during that time because the technical programs were focused on because retraining of careers and mm -hmm. people were able to come to community college at a lesser cost than it would be to go to a four-year program. So that's why we had the heavy truck driving program, all of the apprenticeship programs, and a lot of that focus were on the technical programs. Of course, the academic programs mm -hmm. were very important as well because for your nursing health careers, we had a very strong nursing program, the health careers. I think our passing rate was 99% for those who took the state board, and everybody was excited about Houston Community College. Well, you know, you were here in the early 80s at HCC. Yes. What, that was also a difficult time for the city of Houston. The depression was going through because of the oil crisis that was oh, going yes. on. And Houston took a bath. I mean, we really had to reinvent ourselves with industry because of the losses in the 80s. Did you find a lot of folks going back to HCC wanting to train, retrain themselves to go into other careers? Well, I think that that was a very important part, and that's why they were focused, focused on a lot of the technical programs and I know at one time that there was a great demand for nurses mm -hmm. so they were going in to train to become nurses and uh, LVNs and as well as the RNs and so we always had a waiting list for those particular programs the truck driving as I said program uh, the apprenticeship the welding and those programs uh, were very, very, I mean, they had a large enrollment. And then you've always had your English and your other classes that they had. Until later, when we started the dual credit program, right. that was another part that we had uh, starting uh, mid-80s, uh, when we thought that this would be a way of, of uh, us getting contact hours. And the students would not pay the tuition, but we are contact driven. And that was an opportunity for the college to actually uh, increase the enrollment as well as the contact hours. Well, you know, and that certainly worked very well for HCC today because we have a very blossoming uh, dual credit program. We're speaking with Gr Gwen Drumgool. She's the risk manager here at Houston Community College. Been here since 1980. We're going to be joined in a few minutes by uh, another employee who'll join us who's been here since the 70s. We are watching HCC 50 Years and Counting. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll be right back after this. This is Matthew. He's a high school student on the track team. He's trying to decide who to ask to homecoming, but an easier decision was to get dual college history credit from Houston Community College, HCC, for everyone, anytime. I've seen people's lives change just by attending a class at HCC. Some of them might not have the financial means to go to a four-year university. That doesn't make them any less, quote unquote, smart than the kids who go to a four-year school. HCC is easy to get to. It's easy to apply and easy to become a part of. It gave me so much confidence. Once you finish your two years there, you can transition into a four-year university or go into the workforce. It's affordable, it's accessible, it changes lives. Welcome back to HCC 50 Years and Counting. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're joined by two longtime employees here at Houston Community College. Gwen Drumgool, who's been here uh, since 1980. She is HCC's risk manager. And we're joined now by Mary Lemberg, the director of missions and registrar for Houston Community College. Been here since December 1st, 
1972. Correct. Quite some time. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd be here that long? Never. Never. <laughs> so I think it was one of you two, I was reading through your bios, and you, you thought this was going to be a temporary job. Was right, it yours? Correct. I had just graduated from college and um, married and moved back to right. Houston. So I just assumed I would get full-time employment and was offered a job to start. So. And then temporary turns into, into full time, full time, and, and then forty some odd years. Years later. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for being here. And Gwen and I were, were talking about the '80s, mm -hmm. and I guess towards the end of the '80s it was the early '90s when we split from HIC, it was, correct? Right. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Did y'all think that um, HISD would eventually ever split from? Uh, for HCC would have split from HISD. And what was it like? Was there any apprehension that, well, are we gonna make it um, once we split from, from HISD? And I'll start with you, Mary. Well, I always felt like it was that, that was the intent when we first started, that we would always become you know, one. And I, I think the good thing about it was then we were able to have our own campuses because we used their facilities. We were totally dependent you know, right. on their classrooms and things. So we needed to do that. Be successful. And Gwen? I always thought that we would because we, my office was close to the administration and uh, because there had been a lot of conversations mm -hmm. about having our own board because we were something like the stepchildren. Uh, everything was focused on HISD and when it came to our gender, um, we were, you know, as far as our budgets and so forth, there wasn't a lot of money for expansion or growth. And we were just, as Mary has stated, we were in shared facilities. And every opportunity that we had, we were looking at purchasing a building to expand the college. And when the the split did happen did the growth start immediately did we start obtaining more buildings how did that work uh there were first they started to uh, purchase buildings and it was a gradual process and as we uh, purchased land for the real estate part then we also started uh, to build uh, buildings like I know the Southeast College, mm -hmm. we built that building. And then from that, the rest is kind of like history. And I think it was in, uh, over, it was 2000 when we moved into 3100 Maine. And from that point too, we also saw a lot of growth. There was a bond election. And with this bond election, that gave us the opportunity to expand the college's own facilities. And Mary, you were, um, you're now uh, registrar, <laughs> and back then in 2000, when we moved to this new, to 3100 Maine, um, what was the student body like as far as number-wise uh, compared to where we are now? Well, of course, we've grown progressively. Sure. But um, for us in enrollment, it was, it was the dream come true because we were finally all in one building. Because as the registrar, when we would do enrollment at the campuses, we had to all bring our registration in, um, cards and all the different tallies, to right. the computer center, which was housed in a different building. Um, at least two or three times a week, we yeah. would, I would have to run to the administration building to get things or bring things. So. Well, you look at the registration process now, and I'll, I'll joke with my kids, both of them are college age. One's uh, f finishing up college, but she, uh, I told her that, you know, when I register, I think it was U of H, I'd go into an auditorium, and then I'd get a card, and then they take a sticker from the exactly. class, and they put it on my card, and at the end, I'd have so many stickers, well, I have many classes, I, and I'd go pay, and stand in line and pay, and it was ball before computers, and they're like, well, how long did it take you? I'm like, oh, a couple of hours. Oh, see, it used to be an all-day event. We always yeah. said it was like a social event. You just met everybody there. But I remember it being a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, when every all those little cards came, we had to take them, uh, all of the different registration sites had to take those, kind of like the voting precincts. Right. We had to take them into the computer center. And then every morning, pick up different things to take them back. So. 
a lot of folks listening on our uh, our podcast uh, may be a bit younger, <laughs> but there were uh, days when we worked without cell phones and computers and did everything mm -hmm. manually by hand. And you did a lot of budgeting back then. Oh, no margin for error. Yeah. And so how had, was that? Well, uh, we stayed all night, many nights. Wow. And uh, because every uh, at that time we did not have colleges, mm -hmm. and we're still one system. But we had uh, campuses where everyone had to do their individual budgets. And as a result, all of the budgets were turned in to the budget office, and we had to compile. And we had budget workshops, as we do now. Sure. But everything was done manually. And if you made a mistake, then you had to start all over. Wow. Because the bottom line was you had to come up with that allocation that you were given uh, from the budget office. And wow. so I had the first CPT. Uh, it was like a, it was a huge piece of equipment. We moved from the CRTs to the CPT. Uh -huh. And then I had all of the requisitions that came through had to be monitored through my office. So that's how I moved from secretary, from a technical, to all of the different positions because we were advancing in technology. And so, as Mary stated, we had to wait for the report from our old legacy system that was down more than it was up. And then we moved uh, to the banner system. And from that, we moved to another system. And then when we came up with PeopleSoft, right, and that's the system we're on now. We're People, still PeopleSoft under, online. and we yeah. went uh, for training and so forth. So uh, even with our technology, it's a legacy there mm -hmm. from our start to where we are now. And it's just amazing that you can look up anything that you want. You can Google it. You can find yeah. anything. Uh, you can uh, register online. We have the online classes. And it's just amazing from a manual operation to a more technical program that we have now. And Gwen, you did budgeting. And Mary, you were a registrar, okay. working registrar back then. And, and that had to be done manually too, exactly. right? And all the state reports for our funding, we did manually. My poor secretary, and that was before right. liquid paper and correct type. Um, <laughs> little, there are columns, like 50 columns, you know, right. for each one to put instructor class number. We had to count up the individual numbers on the rolls and enter each one. And, and like Gwen said, any mistake could cost us funding. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm an old news guy, and I remember the time when I started in newsrooms, and I'll date myself, but we had the guys who wore the hats, who were actually typing on the computers, and who smoked all the time, you know, and that's the way it was, and people don't get that now. It was before the word processors and all that, everything was done by hand. To me, that's what's the most fascinating, and you just did it because that's the way it was done. Um, enrollment was the, you know, the same way. It was all manual. Right. That when we had all the off-campus classes that we had, I used to just call myself the roving registrar, and I went with the cashier um, director, and we took a box and we went out and registered. We registered the fire department at the jail, everybody, the old folks' home, and any place <laughs> we could go. You know, yes. we just picked up and went. We're, we're talking with Mary Lindbergh, Director of Admissions and Registrar, and Gwen Drumgool, HCC Risk Manager, has been joining us for the program so far. You'll be leaving us now. I appreciate you being here, and thank you for joining us and telling us your experience with HCC. Thank you so very much. And Mary, you'll be joining us for one more segment. You're watching HCC 50 Years and Counting. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll be right back. Meet Bethel. She has a passion for fashion and a need to succeed. So she's going for two associate's degrees at Houston Community College, fashion design and merchandising. HCC, for everyone, anytime. We have academic programs that help students get from high school into a university. And the data is very clear that students that take the path of a community college finish in far higher numbers than students that start straight into a university experience. Our students can achieve a baccalaureate degree in multiple fields from the universities in the area without ever leaving Houston Community College.
Welcome back to HCC 50 Years and Counting. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're joined again by Mary Lindbergh. She's the Director of Admissions and Registrar here at Houston Community College. You've been here since December 1st, 1972. Yes. What I found interesting is uh, you had uh, had in your bio that you um, started at 1300 Holman working at the, at the old Central Campus, which Correct. is Central now, and you were the only daytime employee because everyone else worked a night shift. That's correct. So we actually, my first office, we actually shared with the adult high school. So okay. um, they <clears throat> came in later. So I was the only person there in the morning. I didn't have a chair. I sat on a box once somebody came in um, to use the office when they all came in at 12. So Is they this the old San Jacinto eight. building? Yes. Okay. Yes. In room 110 down in the bottom floor. Wow. <laughs> So I started there, and from there we um, actually left Central, that was Central Campus, and we went to Leland. We were at Leland Campus, came back to Central until I was moved to Jackson Hill. And then from Jackson Hill here to, t to 3100 Main Correct. in downtown Houston. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, earlier we were speaking with Gwen Drumgool, and um, you had mentioned something about going around and registering people. Yes. <laughs> was that a common practice then? And you're talking about actually yes. going places going, and asking them going. to sign up for classes to Correct. HCC. So they would, that when they scheduled the classes, like mm -hmm. we went to, say, MD Anderson, they might have a nurse aide class there. So we, the registration team would go out there to register the classes. Wow. Day, night, <laughs> weekends. Anytime, anytime they needed you yes, out there. Yes, exactly. Was there, I know the, did, was enrollment done organically back then or was it um, something that was really like, we need to increase enrollment, we need to increase enrollment. What, did it just organically grow? How did that work? I think it was by the, you know, necessity and right. whatever. I mean, they had, we were trying to grow the academic program yeah. because at first, of course, we didn't have that. But, and so the divisions, as they called them then, right. um, you know, scheduled the classes around those. And we talked a bit about this earlier, but um, and I guess a lot of folks don't really understand that Houston Community College was part of the Houston Independent School District. Correct. Um, and when you started, we were completely entrenched with them, right? Correct. And most of our classes started at those campuses like Sharpstown High School or Lee right. High School after 2 o'clock. So that's they, those campuses worked from 2 to 10. Now, was Central, where the San Jacinto building, was that the first official building that HCC had exclusively? I so. I mean, when they first started. But right. we even shared that for a long, long time. It was really? not exclusively ours. They had uh, a high school that still met in the, um, on the second floor. So we right. only had some of those built classrooms. What have, what have you noticed um, the biggest change in the last since you've started? If you could say, I never would have imagined what happened. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, obviously the growth and, yeah. the, and the multitude of campuses. What about the so, online classes? Did you ever dream that would be happening no, one day? No, not to that extent. Yeah. Never. Um, and the and the vast amount of employees. We several of us old timers joke when you used to get in the elevator, you knew everyone. Right. Um, now you get on, you just want to look at the badge and see you know where they work. Yeah. Because there are so many employees. You could go to an in service, you would know people. Um, nowadays you don't. <laughs> so it was interesting. Maybe you can tell us a story about how you started at HCC. Um, you returned to Houston after getting married and graduating, right. and then you worked for two men who came to HCC. Tell me about the that. The first director of admissions was Dr. Um, Bob Mulkey, and he mm -hmm. had been the director of admissions at South Texas Junior College, just down, which is now um, UH downtown. Okay. So I was employed in the summers. Um, I used to take staples out of the paper so they could microfilm them. So wow. both of those um, <laughs> gentlemen started, uh, Dr. Mulcahy came first and then he brought Mr. Pugh, who worked in our international office, he worked in the admissions office as well. And what happened when you first came here? You didn't think it was going to be lasting, right? No, absolutely not. Like I said, I came, I just alphabetized, I registered students. Um, and as the college grew, I was fortunate enough to be able to move to a different, you know, position. Right. So. How many students did you have when y'all first started, and how did you grow over the years? I mean, so, I don't remember the number, but obviously, you know, are we talking we in the hundreds, hundreds of thousands? Hundreds? I mean, you know, right? Uh, but certainly, it's grown and grown, you know, in all of those areas, especially in the workforce. Um, but even in the academic, the number of degrees that we offer. Well, that's one thing with HCC has really grown with the number of programs and degrees, and we are. Um, it's, it's different going to a community college now than it was 25 or 30 years ago mm -hmm. because community colleges, they were, they were like the stepchildren of Correct. universities and, and many they weren't looked at the same way. They were vocational schools. Many people um, make that comment, you know, well, you're yeah. just a junior college. 
um, when we first started. And so even like if they, you know, had a problem with their grade or whatever, they, mm -hmm. I, I guess, you know, thought that the grades were just given to them. But I, we've had many students say some of their best instructors, you know, from uh, their college were from HCC. So. Oh, absolutely. And since you've started all along, you worked um, mainly, it's always been in the registrar's office, huh? Yes. Was that by a matter of chance when you started, or is that something you really had, a, had a wanted to do? No, I mean, it was by chance. Like right. I said, I just happened to do the summer work in the registrar's office and, and, and have stayed. So I would say I know where everything is. I've never lost a student yet. When I leave, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of it's, you know, in microfilm or whatever. I just know how to dig, you know, for right. those things. So. I've, you know, I've talked to several people who've been here uh, for many years, and I ever asked if there were times during your HCC, not necessarily your career, but where you looked at the college and said, things are real rocky now, I'm not sure if we're going to make it next year. Did you ever get to that point, or was it, mm -hmm. was it coming to that point at one, at one time? Never, I don't think, I ever questioned because it was continually growing. Mm -hmm. So. I always felt like the college would make it and continues to thrive. Right. Um, Even as you were approaching the uh, uh, the split with HISD, were were folks pretty confident that things oh, were going to work? So. Absolutely, absolutely, because they knew you know that would right. help us to get the facilities and be able to actually grow, and and be considered more of a college than just something that someone that shared facilities. So. Right, and that that had to be a big deal too, because when I don't think folks realize they see all these nice brand new buildings we have everywhere. But you guys were in strip centers. Correct. And you were in sharing high, high schools, schools and a couple of high schools at the time, not a whole bunch of them exactly. either, right? Exactly. So there really weren't a whole, I mean, you were across the, the district, but there weren't a whole lot of areas that people would go take classes, correct. right? Correct. That is correct. <laughs> and the number of offerings you have now, as far as schedule wise, what were the, you mentioned when you first, you worked at the adult high school, so they were going to class later. Were the classes offered all throughout the, year, number one, and number two, are they offered all around the clock, kind of like they are now? They've always been offered around the year, and of course our biggest, you know, one of our big enrollments is in the summer, because right. there's so many um, college students who come home and take that one course. So people always, um, you know, ask me, oh, I bet you're glad it's summer. I said, oh, no, not really, because every student that comes in needs to apply, have a transcript, go to class, yeah. as a grade. So we do a, you know, if we had a choice, we'd never take vacation in the summer, but. <laughs> you know, um, we're running out of time, but you brought up one thing, which is I'm, just, I'm amazed at how easily this process works now dealing with transcripts yes <laughs> how much how difficult was it then in real briefly how good is it now oh it's completely different because back then we used to they literally used to type the grades on yeah. the transcript and then you know then we progressed to labels where we actually peeled the label after we went and got them from the computer center and then had to alphabetize them so now you can just you know put your social your student id in or social security number and it comes right out <laughs> Mary Lindbergh, been here for more than 40 years. We really appreciate you being here on HCC 50 Years and Counting and telling us about your experience. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining me on the show. Of course, you can download all of our podcasts at hccs.edu slash podcast. For the, for the HCC 50 Years and Counting, I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you next time.